Loss comes in many forms, and usually in unexpected ways. It can be devastating, leaving you facing an uphill struggle to go on with life without someone you thought would always be there. But life does go on, and even in the deepest despair, we can find hope. Welcome to Grief Relief with your hosts, Drs. Gloria and Heidi Horsley, brought to you by the Open to Hope Foundation, helping people find hope after loss. And now here's Dr. Gloria and Dr. Heidi. Welcome to the Grief Relief Show. I'm your host, Dr. Gloria Horsley, with my co-host, Dr. Heidi Horsley. Hello. Hi, Mom. Hi, Heidi. Well, we've taken on a pretty difficult topic today, Heidi, mm -hmm. and that is missing children. Mm -hmm. Really a tough topic. And we know that there are people who ha are missing their children or are having a difficult time right now, and we hope we'll be able to give you some good information on that. While missing children is a really difficult topic, I want to tell you that through these experiences, Heidi and I have met some heroes and angels mm -hmm. in the world. And we want to tell you that we have two of those people on our show today. One is Todd Matthews, and I want to get right. Todd Matthews is with the National Missing and Unidentified Persons System, and he's Director of Communications. And the or organization is called Name Us. And then we're having Mark Class on. And Mark is mm -hmm. uh, from Class Kids. Heidi will tell you a little bit about Mark in a moment. And then we're going to have Michael J. Davis on. Michael J. Davis is a singer, songwriter, and a wonderful person. And he's going to, Heidi will talk a little bit about the song he's going to be doing mm -hmm. for us on the show. But I want to tell you again, there are angels and heroes in the world, and we've got two of them on today. We really do, Mom. And you know, these men that we are going to interview today are so passionate about what they do and they are doing so much to change the world to change the laws and to find missing children and to reunite them with their families some of these kids have, are dead and some of these kids are, are alive and one of these amazing men is Mark Class and Mark is the father of Polly Class Polly was an American murder victim whose case gained national attention in 1993, at the age of 12, she was kidnapped at knife point during a slumber party in Petaluma, California. Mark is the founder of Class Kids Foundation, and his mission is to stop crimes against children. That's great, and we'll be showing a little roll in about the Class Kids Foundation and be telling mm -hmm. you more about it. You want to talk a little bit about Michael and what yes, he's going to be singing for Yes, I would for love to. I would love to. Michael Davis is a singer-songwriter, and he will be singing. Again. Yeah, that is his Angel book. Seed. And by the way, you can find him at michaeljdavis.com, and you can hear some of the, his music there. Mm -hmm. He will be uh, singing something about love, and this song is about finding the place within ourselves where love lives. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, Heidi, let's get started with our first guest, Todd. Todd Matthews, welcome to our hey, show. Thank you for Hi, having me, ladies. Thank you. Hey, Todd. <laughs> It's really wonderful to have you on. And tell people where you came from. I came all the way from Livingston, Tennessee. Yeah, Livingston, a long Tennessee. Flight. Yeah, I mean, it, you had to drive two hours to the airport. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, how fantastic. And how fantastic the work you're doing. I just want to tell our audience quickly about the fact that you got into the work. You had two uh, children, two siblings who mm -hmm. died very early. And you're a person who's lived six generations in the same area, right? Mm -hmm. And you had your cemetery where you could visit six generations of family. Easily, yeah. And, and uh, you came across uh, a missing person years ago and wanted to unite them with your family and got into this work. Yes. But let's catch up with you today because tell us about what you're doing today. Well, today I'm actually the Director of Communications for NamUs.gov, again, the National Missing and Unidentified Persons System. Uh, we work very closely with the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children. For instance, mm -hmm. they actually use our database to manage their child cases, but on the other end of the coin, there's the, the adult cases, which are often even more complex. So nameus.gov. Mm -hmm. And just to revisit what my mom just said, Todd, the reason that this is so important for you is that early on in your life, your baby brother and your baby sister died yes. in different ways. And, and fast forward, now you just feel like it's so important to reunite people with missing, people that are missing. Missing and dead, actually, and dead. because uh, you, you ladies do such great work with grief relief, and mm -hmm. uh, missing is worse than dead, mm -hmm. actually. You know, I've dealt with many parents of, of uh, and other siblings of, of missing persons and, and deceased. They've been murdered. It's easier 
to have a place to go and it be over with than to live the rest of your life trying to find the answer. Right. And it, I never really knew that. And I knew that I had at least my siblings were in a spot where I could go and it was over. It's mm -hmm. the only way I've ever known them was names on a stone. Uh, these people don't even have that. I thought I had nothing with two stones. Right. But really I had more than they had. Wow. Mm -hmm. So I think it's important to try to at least give them that much. And I realized I had a whole lot more than I thought I had. Mm -hmm. You know, I had a little bit of resolution and, and a way to, to heal and go forward, and this is part of it. And now there are, what, 40,000 missing? Uh, there are 40,000 unidentified remains throughout the United States. That's an estimate from an early, um, that there was a study group that, that visited with coroners and medical examiners, mm -hmm. so we know there are at least 40,000 wow. sets of unidentified remains. Can you imagine that now? That's 40,000 missing pieces out there. And my yeah. heart goes out to these families. Mm -hmm. I mean, like you said, 40,000 unidentified remains, mm -hmm. people out there that, are, that don't know where their children and their siblings and their loved ones are. Mm -hmm. It must just mm -hmm. be absolutely heartbreaking. Yeah. It is, it is, and sometimes it's, it's amazing to see somebody grateful to literally have bones mm -hmm. to reinter. And I know how important that is because that's the one thing I would want to do. I would want to take the bones of my deceased loved one and put them with the rest of them. So it's very symbolically important to humans to, to be able to have that in their hand and put people back mm -hmm. uh, where they belong, I think. Well, and one of the things I love, which I've gotten to know about you before the show, is that once you make these calls mm -hmm. and let these families know that you've identified the remains, you also develop relationships with these families, which I think is wonderful with yes. some of them. Uh, yes, yeah, some of them, some stick out more than others, mm -hmm. and uh, they and the ones that really uh, we develop long-term relationships are the ones that want to continue. I've had people, they, they take their loved one and bury them, you never hear from them again, and then mm -hmm. there's others that come back, and I want to spare others this pain. Mm -hmm. Tell me how I can end their journey, how, how can I make it move faster, and we can use those people to serve as examples. Uh, we can also use them to pair with people that are new. You know, when you just newly had an identification, uh, they ask, what's next? And, you know, we have a whole network of people that I can pair people with, and uh, I'll, let, I'll let this lady explain to you what's going to happen next per her own experience. Okay, so now I'm listening to the show, and I'm thinking, wow, my cousin disappeared uh, years ago, and nobody's mm -hmm. done anything. Is it too late? No, absolutely not. I mean, we've recently, uh, it's, it's become routine to have resolution after four decades. Wow. wow. So and that's due to the Internet? That's a lot of it due to the, so, you know, the social media, the, the rapidness of sharing data. We no longer have to wait 30 years for enough information to come together to call it. You, now information can be shared instantly, and I think that's important. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, if you're missing a loved one today doesn't mean we need to be comparing them with bodies tomorrow necessarily. But you need to be preparing for that. Uh, the possibility it could go into a long-term case, what you do here and now is the most important thing. Prepare for the worst and hope for the best. We need dental records, DNA information, fingerprints, as much as you can possibly get. Even though it's 20 years ago? Uh, even, even 20 years ago. It's never too late to go back and try because I've seen it happen. I've had family members that I've talked to about a missing person and I realized they never made a local report. There was never a missing person to report. Mm. Or law enforcement told them, go home, wait for them to come back, and then make a report if they don't. They never went back. Mm. Wow. So if anybody in your, uh, in your audience has a missing loved one in their family or a missing piece somewhere, it is important that they reach out to their local authorities. And if not, they can go directly to NamUs.gov and enter the... This is the first government database where the public could actually do that, and we mm. can help research that for you. Wow, so we can go to NamUs.gov? And do that. And what if I want to volunteer? Well, there's no a real official volunteers for NamUs.gov, but on the NamUs.gov website, you will see a little tab that says volunteerism, and they will point you to some really good organizations that you can, you can go to to help. But the biggest thing is if you have a missing person in your community, whether you're related to them or not, check NamUs.gov or one of the other websites that categorize these. Make sure they're there. If you know of an unidentified decedent in your community and you don't see them on the website, let us know because right. I think we can help you. Great. Well, Todd, thank you so much for telling us about. And we're going to yeah. talk a little bit more to you uh, after we have Mark Class on. We're going to see a little video about Class Kids right now. And uh, yes, th thanks for this important work you're doing. And I know how thank passionate you. you are about it. Thanks for yeah. sharing the word. They are the most vulnerable, and they are the most precious among us, our kids. Sadly, I know firsthand. My name is Mark Klass, and in 1993, 
My daughter Polly was kidnapped and murdered. It was a senseless tragedy and why I started the Class Kids Foundation to ensure that no other child would suffer Polly's fate. We've made a lot of progress since then, but we need your help because there's still much more that needs to be done. Runaways, kidnappings, child prostitution occur every day in America. We can't stand for that. We need your help and support now. Please visit us at classkids.org. We should never forget the most vulnerable among us, our kids. Right. Mark. Hey, Mark. Hi. Good to see you. Good to see you. Thanks for having me. Thank Great you. Well, thanks for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, Mark, what a story you have. Mm -hmm. And uh, I know there's so many people who are wondering, how, you know, who have that story in their mind. I'm sure you run into a lot of people who remember it and ask mm -hmm. you about Polly and how your experience, you know, how you've lived through it and all that. And here you are and doing amazing things. Well, I've always said that we want to make meaning out of Polly's death with our mm -hmm. foundation, mm -hmm. and we want to create a legacy in her name that will be protective of children for generations to come. Mm -hmm. I think 20 years is an accepted uh, lifespan for a generation, and here we are 20 years later. We're still doing things in Polly's name, and we continue to make meaning out of her death. Yeah. Th that is amazing. All I can think of is that Polly is doing as much in her death as she did in her life because you are really changing the world and, and, and helping so many people through this tragedy. Well, listen, before we came along, nobody was really doing anything mm. in this field. Okay. So we adopted a, a pretty broad mission of stopping crimes against children mm -hmm. and then address that in a variety of ways. Mm -hmm. We have a search and rescue operation that has helped approximately 900 families wow. over the course of the last 20 years. Mm -hmm. We have a child ID program and a, a a community outreach program mm -hmm. that has fingerprinted and photographed more than a million kids without ever charging for the service wow. or databasing any information. Mm -hmm. uh, we work on legislation, we get out there in the media, and we try to have a consistent message all the time that it's really about the kids. Mm -hmm. Awesome. That's great. Well, how have you done it? Mm -hmm. I mean, how did you get through it? I'm sitting out there thinking about you, if you know that story. I mean, here you are, you're up moving around, and mm -hmm. I am thinking, I'm not going to get through it. How, how, do, how do you do it? Well, first of all, let me just say that 20 years on, I've found happiness in my life. Mm -hmm. I mean, we, we don't live in pain. We don't live in agony by any means. And really what we did is get up, and when I say we, I mean my wife and I, really, mm -hmm. Violet, is a huge part of our operation. Mm -hmm. uh, we would get up every morning and try to do something to push our agenda forward. Okay. We felt that we had a 90-day window of opportunity after Polly was was reported after Polly was found dead. Mm -hmm. And then people would move on to the next cause du jour, the next victim du jour. Mm -hmm. So we've always worked with a real sense of urgency to try to get things done. Mm -hmm. And lo and behold, 20 years later, we're still, we're still doing wow. it. So, so I like that idea where every day you got up and said, what is one thing I can do to push my agenda forward? And it's always forward. That's uh -huh. really, really important. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's always about moving forward mm -hmm. because once you start looking back, and once you start looking back a lot, you, you, you can remember the regret, you can mm -hmm. remember the pain, you can remember the agony, and you can relive that. So it's, it's, really, about, it's really about always moving forward with your life, mm -hmm. uh, with your purpose, and with your agenda. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. what, what's your plan going on? Do you have something that's going on right now you want to talk mm -hmm. about? Well, sure. I mean, right now... Like I said, we've, we've worked on 900 missing person cases. We have wow. more cases coming in than ever, so we're expanding our search team from the East Coast to the West Coast. Mm -hmm. We'll have both coasts covered uh, with a regional team. Um, we're also looking towards a future of technology, mm -hmm. quite frankly. I think that, as, as Todd has explained, with the work that he does, that's mm -hmm. very technologically savvy. And we, too, believe that whether it's social networking, whether it's smartphone apps, uh, whether it's browsers themselves, whether it's GPS technologies, that the future of the missing kid issue and protecting missing kids is most likely in technology at this point. Mm -hmm. and, and it is amazing when a child goes missing how quickly Amber Alerts are coming on and you're, you get a, an, you know, something on your iPhone saying this and you know, with technology you just get that information, like you said, quickly. 
very quickly, 20 mm -hmm. years ago when Polly kidnapped, you know, mm -hmm. we didn't have Amber Alerts. Yeah. When they put out the All Points Bulletin on Polly's disappearance, mm -hmm. they said this information was not for press release. Oh, wow. So in so many ways, we've evolved and come so much farther that there are children that are being found now. I think two good examples are the young girl in Georgia just last week mm -hmm. and uh, Hannah Anderson from San Diego, I think that was just last month. Right. Mm -hmm. I think without things like the Amber Alert, without the kind of uh, awareness that we have now, that those children wouldn't have had a chance. Yeah, mm -hmm. and it must be yeah. agony. Uh, you, Polly was missing for a few days, right? Polly was missing for 65 days. Oh, really? Oh, I didn't yeah, yeah. Realize. Polly was missing for over two months. That is oh, so my gosh. tragic. It was hideous. Wow. Oh, it was absolutely hideous. Something that I could never relive again. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Yeah. Wow, incredible. So what would you suggest to me out there if I think I have a, uh, or if I have a child missing, what, what do I do? Well, I think the first thing you want to do is, first of all, be sure that the child is missing and not with friends or family. Mm -hmm. uh, then you would call 911. Then you would mm -hmm. call other jurisdictional law enforcement agencies, call the state police and call the FBI. Then you might want to contact media assignment desks and let them know that there's a child missing mm -hmm. and that there's a parent willing to talk about it. And then get busy on social media. Make a Facebook page. Mm, okay. I mean, for so long, the missing child issue has been about the static picture of a child on a poster. But now with social media, you can do a well-rounded uh, a, a well -rounded profile of that mm -hmm. child. You can have videos, you can have multiple pictures, testimonials, links to news stories, et cetera, et cetera, mm -hmm. so that people can look at it and get really invested in your child and then be in a position, hopefully, to help you recover that child. That is amazing. Uh, I just wanted to ask you about your anniversary coming up. Well, mm -hmm. October 1st is the 20th anniversary of... Polly's kidnapping mm -hmm. and um, my wife and I have decided that we have to address this obviously mm -hmm. because for us it means a lot yeah. so what we've done is we've invited people like Susan Whitmore our good mm -hmm. friend uh, to come and join us at a gathering um, in San Francisco on that mm -hmm. day and we've gotten a very good response well over a hundred people are going to show up and these would be people that worked on the case either as Petaluma police officers or FBI agents, some media folks that really helped us, and people that have impacted our lives uh, and impacted our cause over the course of the last 20 years. So we're surrounding ourselves with people that we love and people that we adore. Ah, uh, that's great. What, and I think um, doing rituals and those kinds of mm -hmm. things are an important thing, and we grieve in community and getting community together. Well, I want to talk to you two together for a minute, and I wanted to ask you, what do you think is going to happen with the government and the individual and everything? Is it all going to come together in some way? It has to. It has to, and I, I think I'm, I'm personally I'm committed to that. And I know our government's committed to that. They want to see these two forces work together, the public and the affected community, and we want to make sure that the resources are going into the right direction. I think everybody wants the right thing to happen. Mm -hmm. It's not easy. Yeah. And, and after all, I mean, what is a more fundamental function of government than keeping people safe? Right. right. I mean, really, if they're not doing that, then what do we need them for? So right. I, I agree totally with Todd on this. So mm -hmm. what do you, and you guys both see the social media thing as? Oh, absolutely. It's yeah. huge. Yeah. Sure, it's going, to be, it, it's going to get bigger. Yeah, and mm -hmm. how so? Well, it's going to get bigger because it's still evolving. It's right. still evolving as a system. If you use Facebook, I mean, you can see changes almost every week, and there are changes that make you more and more connected, either with people that you know or with communities that you're involved in. And as it continues to grow around the world and more people have access, there's just going to be more and more of those communities. And I think it's, 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 uh, it's again, it's just an evolutionary type of a situation. It's kind of interesting because I know Todd and I were talking about that the government doesn't do volunteerism, right? Well, they can't mm -hmm. be responsible for, for individual volunteers. Uh, it's, it's kind of hard. It, that's why it's important to work with the dot .orgs. The, mm -hmm. the nonprofits, so that we're dot com too, Don't and dot com. <laughs> it, it can work. You know, people that are, are committed to volunteering. That, right. That's really good. good. We have a lot of people that want to volunteer directly for NamUs. Uh, that's just like volunteering for the FBI. It's just not something that's going to happen. Oh, that's a good point to yeah. the way yeah. to put it. It's it like is. volunteering you know, for it's, the FBI. It's not something, mm -hmm. but you can still help. I mean, just as I spoke of earlier, uh, being aware of what's in your community and making sure that the right databases know about the information. Uh huh. And now, do you have something called? Um, uh, what's the other organization? I, I work with two other organizations, Donetwork.org and ProjectEden.us, and that one is the the volunteer database that that houses missing and unidentified persons uh, mm -hmm. through more 
anecdotal information, like newspaper articles, circumstantial information. Now, can people volunteer for that? Yes, people can volunteer for that, and uh, that's just a gathering. It's more of a genealogy type effort, and NamUs is, although the goal is the same, NamUs is a biological repository, okay. so it's a little bit different. Okay, and how about your volunteerism? You well, there about? you go. We are a .org, mm -hmm. and we do utilize volunteers. For instance, there's a girl that's missing in the Bay Area named mm -hmm. Sierra Lamar. She's been missing for well over a year now. Mm -hmm. We've helped to organize a search for her and pulled in many thousands of people, uh, many thousands of, many hundreds of organizations and businesses to assist in the recovery of that child. And what it does is it gives people a personal sense of accomplishment, mm -hmm. knowing that they can go on a Saturday morning and do something viable to help this family recover their missing person. So yeah. volunteers are huge with our organization. And like you said, it heals them too because it's empowering to be of service and to do something in a situation like this. One thing about you, Mark, that I love is that every time I see you on the media, which is a lot, <laughs> you are so passionate. If a child is missing, it's like it was your own child. You talk as if it was your own child and you are that passionate about finding out where this child is, what happened, and getting to the bottom of it. Well, listen, Todd knows this. Mm -hmm. Everybody deserves peace. Everybody deserves mm -hmm. to be found. Everybody deserves to be buried or cremated or, or dealt with in a way that a family wants to do that. Mm -hmm. And a family does not need to have those lingering doubts. As we right. were saying before yeah. the show, once you know that your brother, your sister, your child is, is no longer with us, mm -hmm. we also know that they're no longer being harmed. And yeah. it gives us that peace of mind yeah. as well. And I understand this agony, having gone through 65 mm -hmm. days of it, and it still enrages me mm -hmm. that terrible people will do horrible things to innocent little kids yeah. and, and just leave these families out there, out there helpless and hopeless in, mm -hmm. in many instances. So, yeah, I do take it very personal. Mm -hmm. I know you both do, and I want to thank you both for being on the show. And you, they really are our angels and They're, heroes, aren't they, Heidi? They're absolutely amazing. Yeah. Thank you so much. And I think we can make a commitment to work together. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd like to work more closely with him. I think we can really make good things happen. There I love go. that. I love that idea, too. Wonderful. We will, we will try. Keep, keep, yeah. keep <laughs> fighting the good fight, guys. Thank absolutely. You. We'll We're it. behind you. Thank you. We want to thank you for watching the show today, and we hope you'll visit us at opentohope.com, and you'll visit us on our Facebook page, and please give us your comments related to the show. We'd love to hear your ideas about other shows that you'd like to have on. And now we're going to have Michael J. Davis sing for us, and Heidi, you said something earlier about what he's going to sing. Do you remember what it was? I did, Gloria. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> I don't have it with me. We're looking me, at our note here. It is a beautiful thing. Okay. You he's, can tell us what your song is. He's going to sing about love. About something about love. Something yeah, about sorry. love. There we go. Okay, thank you, Michael. Thanks, Michael. And thanks, everybody. And thank you for being in our audience. Will I hear your voice above the storm? Will I hear you? For the soul of this world You speak in a way we always knew Might be so simple It can never come true Maybe we can finally see it from another point of view Something about love Something about love In the middle of an ordinary day When the clouds of doubt have all been Swept away In the heart of the silent center Where the love can finally enter And you can be Something about love Something about love All the violets Of the current day Shall not release us Till we can say What lives out there lives in me all the beauty 
all agree Maybe we can finally see it if we'll let it be Something about love Something about love I can see it when I look in your face I can see it in the dreams we chase I know you see it too It's in the last act and the first Every song and every verse It's in everything we do Something about love Something about love We can see the writing on the wall We can see our pride Before our fall We save ourselves save us all and it's something about love something about love I see a wooden ship on a wind tossed sea see a man who's searching looks like me he sings his songs to an empty sky and he hears just one note in the air tonight well it's enough to change his life and it's something about love something about Clouds of doubt have all been swept away. In the heart of the silent center, where the love can finally enter, and you can be something about love. Something about love.